Soka universe. Um, yeah, for now I'm gonna stay this way. You see a little bit back there from the other part of the room that you're used to watching. So yeah, uh, it's just I have made my office this way now because it's a little bit more um, comfortable. So I think I'm gonna stick with uh, the, this background for now and once we can all go back I will go back and switch everything 90 degree wise or let's see how it will go. But I hope you don't miss the jerseys in the background but at least now you have all the scarves in the background. Um, but I always have a jersey. I'm wearing my new Germany away jersey. I'm almost convinced it's a fake, but it's a very, very good fake. Uh, the reason is that this is not very solid. You can see it's a little bit wrinkled. Also this cloth pattern and the pattern, although it's very close, just doesn't line up quite how it should be. So, you know, little things, but um, I don't feel necessarily compelled uh, to get here the original. With the Nigeria jersey, this was a completely different story, but uh, with this one, uh, I feel it's so close enough, uh, even down, down to the material compared to my Belgium jersey that I don't really feel that I need to now go crazy getting the original. Anyway, yesterday, so I'm recording this Wednesday evening, we'll probably post uh, Thursday morning, uh, yesterday is Tuesday, um, the UEFA had a big meeting and as expected Euro 2020 gets moved and we also know now until when it gets moved and that's um, next summer. So instead of the 12th of June 2020, we'll start on the 11th of uh, June 2021. Uh, <laughs> my first thought was, is it then called Euro 2021 or do we still keep it Euro 2020? And also, you know, this was meant to be a 60 year celebration. No, it's a 61 year celebration, but okay, those are really the minor details. Um, what was interesting though is that uh, Copa America got also moved at the exact same times, um, which in a way makes sense because you know the big stars in South America also play in Europe, and uh, UEFA and Common Ball have a kind of a close relationship these days, so um, that totally makes sense. Now, uh, we still need to figure out a few things. Um, we already have the okay from FIFA that the new Club World Cup will be moved one year. You know my stance on that, uh, but there's so much money involved that I think this is gonna happen and this will become a regular thing. So talk about it when that becomes pertinent. Uh, but more importantly, um, we have the women's euros that might have to be shifted by a little bit. But I think most importantly is how do we finish World Cup qualification? How do we finish the Nations League? Uh, when do we play uh, the playoffs for the final spots? Um, the one thing that UEFA definitely said is that uh, there will be no internationals being played up until uh, at least, you know, in this summer period now and the next. So we will won't have any national team play. Uh, up until the fall. <sighs> that gives the leagues uh, um, their chance to finish uh, to finish and we also see, I've, I think I want to make a separate vi vi video on the Champions League and Europa League, those have been suspended now indefinitely as well. But I think this is the stuff that I want to uh, discuss separately, I want to focus now on the, on the Euros. Uh, I've been wond wondering, I mean Nations League, you probably have to even scrap the Nations League and just go into World Cup qualifying or you make the Nations League and then combine it somehow with the World Cup qualifiers even more so than you had before. I mean you had the draw, I mean I would be, if I was UEFA, I would be very very reluctant to uh, scrap the Nations League because this is a new uh, competition and if you scrap it then there's the danger that uh, this might be it. So I would understand if they want to keep the Nations League. Uh, and I actually have to say I totally enjoyed the Nations League. But we have to find now uh, ways for qualification and this is where it gets tricky. Uh, you probably have to play kind of the final. I mean, I think what could happen is that you make now the qualifying groups in such a way that the playoff teams 
uh, for sure in smaller qualifying groups for the Euros. Then that the top four, uh, the final four teams of the Nations League also are in the smaller groups. And that you basically play those spots right ahead of the Euros. Or alternatively that the first round um, of World Cup qualifying, but you know, it doesn't really work out nicely. You usually have a March, you have a June. Now June, uh, the June window is taken by Euro, by the Euros, so I think you're running into some trouble there. Um, can you make the Nations League with groups of three, but then you also need, you know, there's a lot to figure out. Uh, we basically need another international window, which will not be easy to get. We definitely would need that one, and I don't know how you would manage that. It's also not quite clear, will Euro 2021 now go ahead as scheduled? I mean, it is potentially easier now uh, that you don't have a whole host country, that you have single cities. I think that makes it easier, but it might be that some cities need to be switched or whatever. Um, there's some tricky stuff in there that I don't quite know how to, how to resolve. For the Copa America it's a whole lot easier, except that they need to find now also a new World Cup qualifying format. I personally would suggest, you know, split the South American teams into groups and let them play out the spots, uh, top two in each group, qual qual qualifying th uh, third or fourth one. Uh, the two third place teams uh, make a playoff for the final spot. I think this you can do easy, e easily in Europe. I think it's a whole lot uh, more complicated. Um, I could think, but this will be very, very, diff will be very, very difficult. I have to see because I think uh, UEFA has fifty-five members now, and they have thirteen spots at the World Cup. Eleven groups of five, and then a few six groups. I think that you know only the top team gets a qualifying spot. That might be one way to get out of it because then you get the additional uh, match days in a way. I think that is one way to go about it. Just thinking out loud here, I have not really thought too much about it. It's the first time I'm actually really thinking about it. So yeah, um, as for the women's Euros, I think uh, moving that by a week will not make too much of a trouble. The only thing is you take a little bit the attention away from that one. Uh, you still will have the problem that, you know, it, uh, the nice idea would be to play it in winter uh, at the same time as the Africa Cup of Nations, but um, St. Petersburg in January or February, not a good idea. I think for most European cities, uh, I think uh, in I think uh, all of those. I mean, Baku, I'm not sure how the weather is there, but it's also continental climate. Uh, St. Petersburg, Copenhagen, January is, I don't think, is a good option. But hey, yeah, we have at least something. We also get something, and that we'll, uh, we'll talk in another video um, about is we get now a fixed date. Um, all the European leagues have to tell you if by the 30th of June who is playing you're in the European competitions or not, which kind of is a hard deadline, but yeah, kind of seems uh, fair for planning. I think the whole decision is, again, to preserve the 2021 season. But yeah, let me know what you think about postponing it. I think it was the right decision, but it opens a whole other box that needs to be figured out. But probably the um, 11 quarter, uh, the make the qualification groups in such a way that um, you make them smaller groups of five, only a couple of groups of six or whatever, even maybe groups of four. I mean, really make for each slot, make a group and then have it play out that way. Um, might be the way that you can save dates and maybe that also allows the dates to finish the Nations League. Hi, little addendum. I took a shower and I was thinking about what I just said in the video wearing a Germany jersey and the first thing that I wanted to mention is that these guys, Russia, of course would love, absolutely love to take over the Euro uh, 21 now as it is probably will be. As I said, I think the organizational uh, burden for a single country is probably too big so um, probably it will stay 
with the CDIS SDR. And as for the qualification, I quickly made the calculation and I think one solution would be, and I think this is very workable, uh, you have 10 groups of 4 and 3 groups of 5. Gives you a total of 13 groups, one for each spot, very clean in a way qualifying. Uh, procedure uh, so you don't have any playoffs or whatsoever so uh, that makes it easy and the nice thing is the groups of four can be played on six match days so you can have them all in the fall of uh, 21 so that might make it easier and um, you can and to the uh, three groups of five, uh, they just need, I think, two additional match days, which you can all have in March. You can then play in March your final four and the qualifying playoffs for uh, Euro 21 now, and, I th and the final four for Nations League if you uh, adjust the draw accordingly, because I think that should be relatively easy, because none of the teams in the final four will be in the playoffs. So I think this is doable. Of course, another way is to skip all these qualifying playoffs and just assign it to the uh, highest ranked team in each of the playoff paths. We have the Nations League ranking, so Iceland would, for instance, get one. I think Bosnia would get one, uh, and I don't know now by heart the other two uh, paths, how that would go. Maybe not very uh, fair overall, but you know, if in need, that would be a way to go. Um, so that what I would suggest. The other thing is, but you know, again, there is a Nations League. We have the calendar with the World Cup 22 is played in winter, so you could move it a little bit. The problem is, what do you do with the Nations League? Do you make next year entirely Nations League and then have all the qualifying matches played in 22, which might also have its merits. So, you know, just some additional thoughts. I want to throw it out there. But I think making 13 qualifying groups could give you the time that you need. Anyway, let me know what you think about all that. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.